So in the previous video, we saw <coughs> how to get the Cordova script to create the program for our Android app. And we actually have a complete Android app now. The idea is we want to bring it into the Android Studio system so that we can wrap it and edit it, test it, in an IDE and in this particular case Android Studio because this is the one that Google wants you to use. There, uh, we were using Eclipse with ADD plugin, but this is really you know where Google is going with it is with Android Studio. So that's the one you really need to learn to use. Now, if you're developing for Apple, you're gonna want to use Xcode and you would have done all the steps you did here except for in place of where you said Android, you say iOS. And it would have created the exact same folder and files and you would import it into Xcode. Xcode is a little easier to import, works a little better with Cordova, doesn't have nearly the kind of issues with, uh, with the setup, but you know, we're gonna do Android because everybody can do Android. You, you have to have a Mac to have Xcode. You do not have to have a Mac to do Android. And so we're going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Android Studio. And so I would have already installed it um, at this point. And so I would just go into my system and, and start it up as a program. go. Oh, sorry, it already had one. I already have an open project. Let me go ahead and get the, close that project that's open. And so this is what you should get. And so you know, I got some projects I've been working on, but so you'll have this one where you need to import a project. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to import. And so right now um, I've got to go find the one that I just did. And so mine are currently the one that we just created is on my desktop and so let me go ahead and go to my desktop which is right there and then you can see I have a mess on my desktop but it is called test program right here I hit OK and that takes me to the next step and so we're going to create project from existing source. I click next. I can leave it like it is. Again, spaces can cause problems. I just like to leave it alone at this point. And then here it wants you to add some stuff into the into the program. You don't want to add these Cordova libraries in. That one and that one. They would end up being duplicates, and so you want to leave that alone the double plug-in whitelist leave in there and so we're going to go to next and here I've noticed that I'm not positive how important this is this is kind of where you know Android Studio it's new it's kind of a, a even in a beta stage and so you gotta kind of fiddle around with it but you don't want the pre-dex libraries right there where it says pre-dex libraries you don't want those in there and I believe that this the classes and the classes one are duplicates. I'm not positive with that. In Gradle, we don't need either. So I'm just going to keep this one classes thing in here and we're going to build it and see if that works. May have to go back and, and try again. So we go ahead and we can leave all these like they are and hit next. We're going to, I'm going to use platform 22. You need to make sure that you have at least platform 22 installed in Android. If you don't, it's going to give you errors and tell you you need it installed anyway. Just make sure that you go through your SDK manager and you get that installed. And then, so, you should only have one manifest file show up. If multiple manifest files show up, that means that you included too many things earlier and you can just go back to previous and head back and uncheck some of those things that you checked. But since we don't, we should be good. And so, this is the project, it's up, and uh, it's currently loading it. My system's pretty fast, yours may take a little bit while longer. And so 
I'm going to go here and go project. And so here's my project, and you can see if you drop it down, assets, www, here's the actual index page, and I can now double click on it. I can edit it if I want. But right now, we just want to go ahead, and all I want you to do is run it. And so we can go in, we could run this, I click on the run, it should bring up and start running. It doesn't look like we have any errors so far. Hopefully, if there's no errors, it should pop up on an emulator. Now, again, my computer is pretty fast, and the emulators are getting better, and so mine's going to pop up pretty fast. Yours may take longer, depending on the speed of your computer. Um, again, mine, you know, I'm running on a Mac Pro. It's a, it, it's a relatively fast computer. But you may have a faster computer years may come up really fast but I'm coming off of a solid state hard drive which is really important for speed and so you can see here it is on the emulator that popped up I'll probably take it a minute to so it's like it's starting up the Android operating system and sorry my second screen over here has a different resolution doesn't look like it's going to allow me to change the size, make it smaller right now. So you just got to give it a while. It's got to start up the whole thing just like as if you had hit power on your on your mobile device. And so it's loading the whole operating system. And all of your output from your program will, will run back here in the in the console, so you'll be able to see all the stuff going on. Get ready for a bunch of errors. The Android reports a lot of errors, a lot of missed frames for some reason when you're working with it, but they they don't do anything. So what I think has occurred is because I'm using the speaker on my system, it has caused the emulator to fail. Because I'm recording the video, typically it would have been up by now. I would have probably had to swipe up, I think, and then it would have loaded the Cordova app and it would have, you would have just seen a blinking thing. We have no errors. It would have worked. And so go ahead and, and you shouldn't have any problems. I can quit the emulator, but you can leave your emulator up. That way you don't have to load it every time. And so whenever you, just like on an Android device, whatever button you would hit on an Android device to quit the program, when you quit the program, it's no longer running, and it's fine in here. And you would just hit this run again to go ahead and do it. And, so, and if you make any changes, you can just build it. You can make your project, build it, run it again, and, and keep testing. We have a nice visual environment to run in. If you can get this far, you're in really good shape because we're just going to have to work in these folders from this point forward. You just work with the www folders and make those changes, and, and it works really well. And so I hope good luck.